Hi, I'm student Dr. Jay Modi. And I'm student Dr. Kyle Fitzgerald. And today we're just going to be talking about our project over the cross-sectional analysis of gender and region differentiation amongst a scientific review committee. And so we'll get this started with our main objective. So the purpose of our study was to investigate um, gender and geographic disparities for panel members uh, that assess grant candidates in the Biomedical Informatics Library and Data Sciences Review Committee, or which we called it and labeled it as BLR, within the National Institutes of Health. So evidence over our history has shown that there are wide disparities between demographics, particularly within the scientific research. Um, one, one study that we found in one of our sources that we cited uncovered the facts that women of the STEM field show a much shorter scientific publishing career length and have higher dropout rates compared to men, even though their numbers are comparable. This shows an obvious disparity in gender. So we feel that the scientific research community should work diligently to establish a sense of inclusion in all aspects including those applying for federal funding for his or her respective research. Now going on to the methods. So basically our team uh, obtained the rosters for the BLR study section panel for all meetings held within the months March, June, and November of the years 2011, 2016, and 2021. And so with those rosters, we obtained the study section member names, affiliations, academic degrees, and the respective city and state data from where they were at. And we extracted that through a pilot tested Google form done by the study authors. And with that, we tried to document the gender difference and the gender difference was then recorded through an internet based profile finding of the members affiliated institution. And if that wasn't found, uh, we used a website called genderize.io needing a probability greater than 0.6 for the gender to actually be confirmed and documented within our data. All the data were then transmitted onto a Google Excel sheet for gender and region categorization amongst the panels for each year. And so as you can see here, uh, the two figures show the gender representation and geographic representation for our respective BLR study. Uh, for figure one, as you can see, in 2011, there were 20 males and 17 females. For 2016, there were 20 males again, but with 13 females. And for 2021, there's a big junk jump with 31 males and 22 females. Uh, you can see that males are shown as a predominant gender for all three years. And moving on to the geographic representation, uh, as you can see, there's been quite a bit of diversity amongst the regions, but the South has held the most amount of members for all three years. And on the right is a picture of the map that we use to divvy up the regions within, their, within the respective members. And now moving on to the conclusion. So in conclusion, just to repeat ourselves, um, our goal was to display the possible disparities amongst regional and gender representation within our NIH study section. So with these results, our findings showed that the South was emphasized in having the most representation of BLR panel members, as shown in the previous graph. Um, additionally, there appeared to be a trend shown of males being the predominant gender within all three years, especially in that 2021 year. Uh, these results express that there continues to be a gap in equal representation of both gender and regional background amongst these, this study section. Um, but overall, this data suggests that the NIH continues to appoint a greater ratio of males and females, along with a larger representation of those from the South as scientific review committee members for proper allocation of federal funding. And here are our references. Thank you so much. Thank you.